This video covers the sinus rhythms and the dysrhythmias you will find that we apply the sinus label to. Sinus rhythms originate in the SA node, the sinoatrial node. They're characterized by regular P waves, regular PR intervals, one QRS following each P wave, and all of our so-called normal durations and measurements should be present. The term normal sinus rhythm implies that all the parameters are present without any indication of pathology. When we label something as sinus, but don't call it normal sinus rhythm, we're saying we believe the rhythm is still originating in the sinus node, but that something about the rhythm is abnormal. In the case of a sinus bradycardia, all of our normal parameters are present, except the SA node is discharging at a rate less than 60 beats per minute. Common causes of sinus bradycardia include increases in vagal tone, which can come from things like vomiting, straining with exertion, bearing down on the toilet, coughing, or just pain. Other things that may increase vagal tone include increased intracranial pressure, a patient positioned with pressure on the neck, especially if they're on their left side with a pillow under the head or the neck, and a variety of medications such as beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and digoxin. In a sinus tachycardia, again, all the parameters are normal except that the rate of SA node discharge is greater than 100. That rate will generally be between 100 and 160. The P wave is usually visible and normal with a consistent PR interval, but at very high rates, the P wave may be partially obscured by the T wave or cause the T wave to appear notched. What causes sinus tachycardia? Life causes sinus tachycardia. Obviously, stress, anxiety, exercise, fear, ingestion of stimulants like coffee, energy drinks, or something stronger like cocaine or methamphetamines. Anything that increases sympathetic nervous system stimulation may cause sinus tachycardia. But those potential causes include hypovolemia, respiratory distress, acute MI, congestive heart failure, or pulmonary embolism. The key here is to recognize that a sinus tachycardia is not a rhythm we need to treat or modify, but it may be an indication of a serious problem, either a cardiac problem or something completely unrelated to the heart. A sinus dysrhythmia, or sinus arrhythmia as it's also called, is a somewhat generic label, but we use it to describe a sinus rhythm that is slightly irregular. In this case, the rate of impulse formation in the SA node varies instead of its normal, rhythmic, consistent metronome type pattern. The most common cause of sinus dysrhythmia is changes in vagal tone tied to respirations. The rate increases with inspiration and decreases with expiration. And this is common in kids and usually has no clinical significance. In adults, however, this could be an indication of something more serious, such as an anterior wall MI, sick sinus syndrome, which is a disease process that disrupts normal SA node function, or a response to digitalis therapy. We identify a sinus dysrhythmia by noticing that there are variations in the P-to-P -P intervals and the corresponding R-to-R -R intervals as well. A sinus arrest occurs when the SA node fails to initiate an impulse for some period of time. This is identified by the absence of a P wave and the absence of a resulting QRS when those should have occurred. This causes a period of cardiac standstill. The pause lasts until either the sinus node resumes its function or another pacemaker site takes over, usually the AV node. So just to keep things confusing, you'll find ECG references in textbooks that talk about two very similar phenomena, which is a sinus pause and a sinus arrest. The difference in those labels is dependent on where the next beat originates after that pause. If a backup pacemaker, such as the AV node, kicks in when the SA node fails to fire, we call it a sinus pause. A sinus arrest is a bigger concern, which may be what earns it that arrest label. In that case, the backup pacemakers don't fire, meaning that nothing happens until the SA node fires again. In an isolated instance, this is no problem, but if the SA node just stops firing entirely 
and no backup pacemakers do their job, the result is asystole and cardiac arrest. Sinus pause or arrest can be caused by hypoxia, ischemia, damage to the SA node, digitalis, or an acute MI. This is generally a rare dysrhythmia. It probably doesn't matter at all whether you call it a pause or an arrest, as long as you are assessing the clinical impact it has on your patient and are prepared to manage that arrest if it continues. So to summarize sinus rhythms, we label it as sinus when all the P waves look alike and all the PR intervals match and are between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds. The first name is sinus and the last name is based on what else we find. If it's slower than 60, we call it a sinus bradycardia. If it's 60 to 100, we simply call it a sinus rhythm or a normal sinus rhythm. And if it's greater than 100, we call it a sinus tachycardia. If it's irregular, which is not what we expect to see with something coming from the SA node, we call it a sinus dysrhythmia. And if the SA node just doesn't fire sometimes, we call it a sinus pause or a sinus arrest.